Hello and welcome at Europe PCR 2025. I'm Philip Lutz and I'm delighted to be joined by Mike Mullen from London and Federico De Marco from Milan. And we are here today to discuss the latest developments in the field of both repair and replacement to treat mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. And Mike, there's some very exciting news. The, the first transcatheter transeptal mitral replacement system has been approved, the, the M3 system. Can you summarize some details about the system and then how the procedure is performed? Yeah, so as you mentioned, this is the first approved transeptal transcatheter mitral valve system. And it's a novel system in that, unlike other systems where you implant the valve in the mitral valve annulus, you use that for anchoring, this uses a docking system, which is implanted, again, transeptally around the mitral valve apparatus and the leaflets, and then a modified Sapien 3 uh, valve. The M3 valve is then deployed inside the dock to uh, replace the mitral valve function. To the two components to the procedure. And you did some cases and we just uh, very recently did the first commercial case in an elderly lady, um, complex anatomy, mixed etiology, obviously severe MR, certainly wasn't a good candidate for tear. And she underwent the procedure very successfully, recovered very well, and is doing great. And what I found quite interesting is that, given in still early days, the procedure took us less than two hours. So it's, there are two components to it, and it requires some understanding, obviously, of the anatomy. But I think it can be performed in a reasonable amount of time, and the, the learning curve should be reasonable. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think the implanting the dock is probably the most complex part of the procedure, and that requires uh, some learning uh, if you haven't done it before, and so there will be a learning curve to that. But once you've got the dock implanted, as, as, as you know, implanting the valve is very straightforward. And the results in our experience have been excellent with very little in terms of MR or paravalvular MR and excellent clinical results. Yeah, I can echo that. No MR whatsoever. So that was really great to see. So obviously a huge advantage to have repair and replacement, but then it, it, we have more things to decide on, right? Whether we should repair the valve or whether we should go for a replacement. And in the tricuspid space, repair and replacement options are already around for more than one and a half years. Frederico, what are your learnings from the tricuspid field? I think that the introduction of a TTVR system uh, for tricuspid replacement has impacted my practice upon different levels. First of all, I've seen an improvement in my TTR results. I don't need to kind of, you know, uh, push the limits and start treating complex jet to give an option to those patients because I have an alternative which works very nicely. And uh, on another level, I've seen my uh, patient population expanding. In Italy, for instance, we have lots of rheumatic disease patients that get, get operated on the mitral. And uh, uh, those patients turn out to have, you know, tricuspid path pathology later down the road. And also that, uh, you know, Evoke is definitely an option to, to have good results in those patients. So you treat now more patients and the complex ones you're more likely to do replacement? Exactly. So when I start seeing complex jet, you know, posterior jets, multiple leaflets, wide coaptation gaps, I know in advance that those patients which will have a better results in terms of TR reduction with Evoke. And we know how important is TR reduction uh, to, for the quality of life of our patients. How do you envisage the, the, your decision-making when treating MR in the future and now having repair and replacement available? Well, I think very similar to the tricuspid space, the indications for this technology will probably evolve over time. At the moment, we're, it's indicated for patients who are not suitable for either surgery or for edge-to-edge -edge repair. But I think there are a growing number of patients where we know we're not going to get a great result with other transcatheter uh, repairs, particularly patients maybe with a degree of stenosis or patients with mitral annular calcification. And as we become more familiar with this technology, I, sus I suspect then our uh, indications for its use will grow. Frederico, what do you think, what's the impact of the advent of mitral replacement by transcatheter means for your program, for your patients, for your practice? 
Again, I, I expect uh, to um, see, uh, you know, the improvement in overall results as I've seen in, in tricuspid. So, you know, that giving uh, uh, different options to effectively treat, you know, mitral patients with transcatheter, transfemoral replacement, I expect to see the overall results improve and definitely, uh, you know, the possibility of applying this therapy to a wider patient population. So certainly very interesting times. We have more options. We can now tailor the therapy. We can decide on whether repair or replacement should be performed. We probably will end up with more effective procedures, hopefully also safer procedures. And um, as always important, we need to go through a very steep learning curve and benefit from a group learning, but um, exciting times. And it's great to have finally replacement options available also for the mitral valve.